Hello, everybody. Welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm your host, Mark Fusco. Welcome to another episode. All right, we're on to the next 50 episodes. Episode 51 starting today. Um, I'd like to thank all of you for watching the first 50. Now we're on to the next half of uh, the next, well, the first 100. All right, so what do we got today? Uh, we have um, my good friend, Frank Bachelor, uh, sent me uh, some wines here. I got six wines overall from him. And uh, some of these are wines that we did at the tasting at Cena Club Cafe. So um, the first one I'm going to do is uh, the Conde de Velasquez Sauvignon Blanc 2008 from Chile. It's from the uh, Aconca, uh In my head I can pronounce it. Isn't that strange? The Aconcagua. Aconcagua. Man, I'll, I'll, it'll, be in the, it'll be in the notes below. Uh, Valley of Chile. Um, it's uh, Sauvignon Blanc, and in this valley... Um, the north, the, not the northern, but the upper part of the valley um, is known for having the bold reds. Uh, so you have your Cabernet Sauvignon, your Merlots, stuff like that, Syrah. Um, when you get to the closer to the coast, that's when you're going to have things like Sauvignon Blanc and um, Pinot Noir. And uh, it's the valleys, there's a big mountain, okay, where the valley is. This is between the Andes and the Pacific. And uh, the, the, same, the name, mountain is the same name. It's like 22,000 feet. It's like the highest mountain outside of Asia, I think is what, what I saw. Um, and uh, there's also a river that runs through the valley with the same name. So um, we had this, and uh, I, was, I really liked it. So uh, let's try it now, kind of a more controlled setting and, and, and all that. Um, it's also at room temperature, which I know most white wine people are going to cringe that I'm tasting something at room temperature, but, you know, that reveals everything. So, I'm getting some good citrus on it, um, which I really like, and... Um, I would say kind of lemony lime citrus. Uh, you're not getting uh, far as like outside of France, you get like, well, the typical New Zealand Sauvignon Blanc, you can get that grassy lem uh, grassy and cat pee type of, of nose. I don't get that at all. Maybe even some tropical fruit too now. Now that's opened up a little bit more. Um, So yeah, now let's go ahead and check it out. So again, I'm getting some good acid, um, getting the tropical fruit and the citrus and some good acid. Um, it's not super focused on the acid, but it's, it's, it's nice, uh, it's fairly tight, I would say. Um, you're getting kind of that lemony uh, flavor to it. Uh, so, uh, like I said, the citrus, like the, really the tart citrus, lemony. Um, I don't get as much as the tropical fruit on it. And, um, you know, the finish... Finish is good. It's not super long, uh, but it doesn't like disappear immediately. Um, I still can kind of taste it. So um, it's overall, it's a good wine. Um, I don't know as far as retail, if it's available anywhere in the San Antonio area retail wise, or if it's available in your area. Uh, but in the research I did, it retails anywhere between six and nine dollars a bottle, um, which is about right. Um, it's uh, you know, it's it's a good solid wine. Uh, it's it's. Uh, in restaurants, so this is a good wine to have at a restaurant that you want some Sauvignon Blanc. That's probably going to run you. I'm going to say it's going to run you between five and say seven dollars a glass. Um, that's typically what the pricing would be on it. And um, it's a good solid wine. It'll go with a lot of food. Um, I think it's well made. Uh, I, I didn't. Uh, I'll give you a rating. So um, I say it's an 86. It's it's right in there. Uh, it's it's a good wine. And uh, I mean. 
especially for the six to nine dollar range of, for, for a bottle uh, at retail, totally would buy it again uh, or would buy it. Um, at a restaurant, I would I would definitely gravitate towards this kind of Sauvignon Blanc. Um, I mean, I like Sauvignon Blanc in general. It's I just I like the clean, fresh uh, taste of it. And that's what it's got. It's got, you know, it's clean. It's got some freshness to it. Uh, it's got some good acid. And it's got that citrusy lemon uh, flavor. Uh, definitely pair it well with, with some lighter meats like, you know, chicken and, and pork. Uh, uh, <clears throat> maybe even, I wouldn't really put it with any duck because that, that's kind of going a little too far. But, you know, chicken, maybe, a, maybe some veal, uh, depending on the sauce. Like uh, there's a restaurant locally that uh, like to get the, a, uh, a veal dish from them, but you get like a veal piccata, you know, or a veal. We they have a veal Christina, outstanding by the way. Um, so you can have that. I'd even have it maybe with uh, salt and boca. I haven't had some. I haven't had a good veal salt and boca in a while. I was uh, one of the restaurants I used to go to in Chicago. I had it all the time. So let's talk about the area a little bit. Um, uh, like I said, the uh, the valley. Uh, the lower part of the valley, they do the, the lighter grapes, you know, the Sauvignon Blancs and Pinot Noirs. The upper part, they do the heavier reds. Um, vines were first brought to the Chile area back in, by the Spaniards in the 16th century. Um, and they had you know, a few varietals there, but what really took off for them was the French varietals that were brought in in the 18th century. Uh, one significant thing about uh, Chile is they've never suffered from the, uh, from the phylloxera uh, mite from, from the... Uh, what happened in France and Europe. So their, their vines are the original rootstock and they didn't have to get grafted from American rootstock. Um, so they didn't, they didn't suffer from the phylloxera, uh, Laos, the mite. And then, um, what else? I've already covered all that stuff. Yeah. Uh, another thing, another quick fact is that Chile um, is, I think, the fourth largest exporter to the U.S. in wine. You know, so... We get a lot. Of, we get a decent amount of wine from Chile. It's a great value play. Um, you can get some good wine for good value. Um, all right. So, a little housekeeping. First of all, um, like I said, I've got. I'm working on some stuff uh, for the future for the podcast. Uh, make sure you're you're uh, clicking the links. You know, to friend me up and make sure that you got the donate buttons and all that. Another thing for you that the few of you that watch off of uh, the podcast, which is served by Blip.tv. Or you're getting the blip.tv player through whatever website or web page that, that's, that's subscribing to it. Um, sometime over this weekend, I'm going to be moving uh, the iTunes feed to Viddler. Now, Viddler is the service that I use to host the website on the web page. Um, iGoSA also gets my player. Well, I actually get the player from my web page, but the same player from Viddler. Um, so Viddler is going to become my one-stop shop for that because I, that way I don't have to upload my stuff to two different places. I'm still going to be uploading to, to YouTube, and that's going to be one of those things where I upload every few days, upload a bunch to YouTube. Um, YouTube is not my primary uh, source for everything. It's just that YouTube's got a lot of eyeballs, so you might as well put your stuff on there. But um, I still have episodes that are a little bit longer than that 10 and a half, 11 minute you know, actual time limit that YouTube has. So you won't see everything on YouTube, even though all the videos are uploaded to their servers. Um, so we got that. Uh, today's article uh, will be in Uh Got to send that off to, uh, to uh, them. But remember, every Wednesday, I have an article on igosa.com, igosa.com. So uh, read that. And uh, as always, leave me your comments, send me your emails. Uh, let me know what you like, what you don't like. We got some more wines uh, coming from uh, from WD3 and Frank Bachelor. Uh, got a few more of the Conde de Velasquez, Velasquez, uh, and then we got the Campus Oak Old Vine Zinfandel coming up soon. Uh, probably the next few episodes will be all those wines, so I can highlight that stuff. And uh, again, thanks for coming in. I really appreciate it, and we'll see where we begin next time.